Welcome back, ballers, to the web show. Ooh, some transmogs coming up. We'll definitely be giving them our review. Of course, Ghosty's review. It's worth pointing out here, Genji is now essentially the community manager. Yes, he is. Uh, I assume would be the role we could bestow upon him. And he's running all sorts of events. Transmogs of the Week, uh, which is pretty cool. I think Smosher won it last time, actually. So big congrats to Smosher. He, uh, he's Transmogs Yeah, there. just something about that. Everyone said, no, it's boring that. It's boring that. Everyone has seen the tier sets. Yeah, please stop sending us tier sets, guys. If it's, yeah, if it's, an intermixed, really? if it's an intermixed tier set thing, fair enough, but... If your armory is just a tier set, it's like, yeah, it's shit, that. It's like, this guy's put the effort in, he's got a low drop rate item to finish his set that matches. It's like, yeah, it's boring, that. Every fucker's got a tier set. It's really not difficult Have to a bit attain of a tier creativity. set. If it was an original uh, Nax, uh, Nax set or something that's unattailed anymore, then maybe. Uh, but we get so many people who are like, I've got full tier 5 on my character, and it's like, ah, come on, come on. Really, let's get some variety in there, get some fun going on. Uh, but please stop sending your transbox to preachgate at gmail.com. Put them on the website so Genji can assess them. Just another thing as well, don't make several posts with about 10 images in. Oh yeah, that was so annoying today while I was making the transbox video. These people posting like 8 screenshots of their fucking transbox. <laughs> Jesus, guys, just one screenshot from your character screen is all we need. And we will get to prizes as soon as possible. We really... Genuinely will. Don't you worry about that whatsoever. We will get there to give you some prizes and stuff. So it's going to build and build. And I think tomorrow, or maybe today, Genji's picking a YouTube video that someone's created for some footage. We're getting about 60,000 views per month on the website at the moment. Not a massive amount. It's not Google. Uh, but we're getting plenty of views. 60,000 is by no means small. So we'll get your videos on the front page if they've got a bit of quality to them, a bit of class. That'll be really nice. So, do you want to look at the transbox? Oh, let me talk right. about Heart of Fear first. Go on then. Heart of Fear's out. Okay. The new raid. What's your feelings? Are you looking, do you want to try it out? Do you want to check it out? Are you well, I don't, I don't know nothing about it. I'll admit. Heart of Fear is the bug instance. Think AQ. A lot oh, of like, insect uh, like, the, like the start of a uh, C John blah, 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 where he's starting the tree. Yeah, that, that instance. So it's based in the dread wastes. So all them things there, you know, you know, all the Klaxis things and yeah, all those yeah. insectoids and stuff like that. Um, I, I remember raiding on the beta. I thought it was an average to okay instance. The last boss in particular I thought was pretty enjoyable. Uh, the other bosses, eh, not so much. There's a boss called Garolon, which is particularly bad. He's like uh, Buru the Gorge. Do you remember Buru? Yeah, I remember. Crawling after you. Got to kill the legs, things like that to slow him down, all that kind of aspect to it. Very easy on normal. Uh, but one of the things that really baffled me is um, I was watching some streams when Heart of Fear came out uh, just to see how guys were doing. Some of the top guilds in the world, now I'm not trying to be a prick or anything, but they were really, really bad at some of the things in there. And it surprised me a lot of the maybe where people are in the game in the top guilds. Maybe I need to kind of put some more advanced stuff out there. Um, one particular boss called, I think it's called Viclaw, has an ability called Attenuation. Uh, where he spin, he spins rings out from in concentric circles, uh, out from his location. It causes you damage. Um, I'm trying to think of the boss Atremedes. You know the rings across the yeah, floor, yeah, yeah, yeah. very much like that. Now these things are in spinning circles like this, and there's a path all the time, 100% of the time, all the way around him. So once you see the rings that are coming out, you just run in a circle around him, and you can't possibly be hit. It's impossible to get hit. You just run in a circle. Slightly different on Heroic, there's extra shit going on there. But on Normal, you just run in a circle. I saw so many people, and I'm talking guilds in the top 70s, wiped out by this ability. They were like, holy shit, there's dancing rings everywhere. And this was not on like Wipe 1 or Wipe 2. This was like five or six tries in, Attenuation came. And they were absolutely wiped out. I was really, really surprised to see that. Which makes me think that on Heroic, they're really going to struggle a little bit. And it could separate the men from the boys. Nice, mate. Game like, changer. Do you like the way I dropped that in there? I did. Men from it, was, the bikes. it was good, mate. It was good. It was, uh, it's, it's, as someone was going to say, it's really, really easy to avoid. In fact, the first time I saw this ability, um, I saw that it was going in the circles, and I just ran in the circle, and I was like, yeah, it's, it's, I just said on, on Dental Team Speak, and I said, he's just running in the circle, it's fine. And everyone else was like, yeah, yeah, it's pretty easy. <laughs> so I just put the shard of a round thing, flame reef activated. Nobody move! Oh, God. Boom. You, what was the most stressful, easy ability you can think of from raining? I'd probably say that. The Flame Wreath. Just the don't move. The Flame Wreath was baffling to some people. Yeah. They couldn't handle it. I, I think, move uh, from your keyboard. Even, yeah, just stop moving. And people couldn't do it, could they? They couldn't stop jumping. I think jumping set it off at some yeah, points as well. Yeah. It was like, Flame Wreath, just don't move. 
and somebody would always say it off and it used to baffle my fucking brain but brain it used to really stress me out that people couldn't do that i mean towards the end of i think it probably took all the way till the end of um Verde crusade so people were genuinely able to cope with flame wreath mm. uh, going on and just happening it was very one of those weird abilities and it wasn't difficult it wasn't like i could understand people failing on say nether spike that's why it took a little bit of coordination in its yeah. initial days uh, it was a little bit tricky especially um, when tanks started to realise you could tank in anything so I would essentially be in DPS gear and keep uh, tanking just with a shield tanking on. like the bone things that came down you have to tank them as well didn't you that was um, Nightbane oh Nightbane yeah Sorry, that's Nether Nightbane yeah, Nether Spike's yeah. the one with the three beams yeah, yeah. that you had to mix and match in uh, that was pretty crazy and but yeah speaking of Nightbane uh, Karazhan was so good wasn't it I love Karazhan Karazhan was so good do you, uh, you don't think you raided with us when we raided Moreau's, but God, that fight was I hard. Think you I think you made it to be there. Yes. Did we have to have both of us in there for two bops? Because we're both paladins. Uh, for the I don't bleed. remember that specifically. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. Fucking crazy, that fight. So I, I think that was, that was a day as well, in, in Vanish, on a rogue, that would take that uh, bleed off, wouldn't it? No, the only thing I remember took the bleed off was bop, divine shield, uh, and uh, there was a trinket that was a level 60 trinket from, I want to say, Eastern Plaguelands, and it was called a loofer. And yes. the loofer could remove bleeds, and then they had to nerf the loofer, because people were going back and farming this trinket, and also petitioning GMs to get it back if they'd already had it. It was a quest reward, uh, remove bleed effects. And things like dwarves being overpowered because of that, that was crazy. I'll tell you what, that was a great time to be a paladin, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. That was a TBC really was good time to be a paladin. Awesome. I would really think cool. I was... Uh, me and you were pretty much essential to those teams clearing it. So I was just thinking back to Nightbane then with the bones when you said tanking them. What we used to have to do there was put Righteous Fury on it for a minute. Yeah. And, start, and I'd get every other healer to stop healing while we did all the healing so yeah. we would get aggro and control them because these bones would struggle. And we had shields, really high armor, and we were able to cope with that. And I'm just thinking of other instances that were like that. So Nightbane, we were really crucial. Maiden of Virtue... By putting Blessing of Sacrifice on the tank just before the stun, yeah. only Paladins could break it yeah. without taking okay. extra damage and then dispel everybody else, which was just an insane awesome. ability. But really let Paladins shine at the time. It was Definitely. fucking crazy. Really good. I, just, I missed that time. That's what I mean, so like, de decent little mechanics like that where it's not cheesing the fight. It's basically expected, but it's you know it's it's almost class specific. Well, this is the thing I was talking about during the, one of the dailies. I had a bit of a rant. It was on my mind. Which was something that was on my mind and it really shouldn't have been. It was about healing. Now, I'm not a healer. But it had been playing on my mind after playing some healers for a while. Is that all the classes have kind of been homogenized together. So they're pretty similar. So you always with kicks. Homogenized. Homogenized. Making them all the same, essentially. And they've done the same with healers. And I'm not sure that's the right direction to go with healing. Because they're now they're kind of like, well, all healers are the same. They all have single target healers, AoE healers, and stuff like that. And... It's kind of similar. There's some some unique abilities in there, but then I think back to how like a paladin was, in those instances, and how great it was to be a paladin there. Because I wasn't just healing; I was tracking abilities to make sure I had sack on to break that. Otherwise, we might wipe. And then throwing out bops. My unique buffs were really helpful there. Having things like righteous fury, where you want things to go towards a healer. You know, things like that make that class. I'm, I I can't remember much of just straight up healing being that interesting. Yeah. But throw me something else into the mix. Like when you have something to kite as like, um, let's think of the stone guard on heroic, where you have to light the tiles up. Just these extra little twists on the fight make your class ten times more interesting to play. And it's not just about, well, this fight I DPS this target, this fight I heal that target. And it just felt healing became very samey. It felt samey no matter what class I was playing. Karen, I'm just going to answer a question for one of these guys. And I really enjoyed... The old school, where it was a little bit different, but again, we run into. I said the my suggestion was that via the talent system, you could specialize into different areas, so it could be a big major single target healing. But doing that would make your AOE healing suffer. So the other healers have to coordinate between each other over who's going to handle this situation. Uh, little things like that might be a move in the right direction. What you don't want to have though is one class becoming so powerful that you'd only bring those healers. Yeah. That's very dangerous. That's a that's way backwards that we want to go. I just want... I want uh, healers to have abilities. I think it would be nice for those classes to have abilities that are uniquely powerful in certain situations. Of course, we're in a world of class stacking, but it's, a, it's, it's not something that needs to be hammered into place. It's something that needs to be crept forward slightly. And just... I think that if that happened, healers would have a much more... 
fulfilling role is the word I'm wanting to look for. Much more fulfilling than just keeping the health bars topped up. How quickly can we get down healers? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. How quickly can we reduce the healers here? That's what you know. That seems to be the theme of it. It's how quickly can we get the healers from X amount down to Y amount? Never nice to be in that situation. Is oh, if we get more healing gear, we're just going to lose one of our friends because healing communities and healing teams and guilds are a very close knit group. And I think you probably experienced that yourself as when you were a, a paladin healer in vanilla. I think that was your only time being a raid healer. I would have thought. Oh, besides TBC. TBC. Yeah, Vanilla and TBC. But that was a me and you show. <clears throat> yeah. Everyone else can see. That was A and B conversation. They can see the way out. See the way clear yeah, of it. That was, uh, that was the Preach and Ghost show, that healing team. <laughs> wasn't it? That was a one-on-one -on -one combination. I need to apologize for you for those days as well. I used to make sure I had a Shadow Priest. And if you couldn't get in there, that was tough shit. But I always had a lot more mana than you did. You needed the fucking help. I did need the help. Like Nick Fury needs. said, mate. Like Nick Fury said, you needed the push. I needed the push. I need to push. You were I didn't need good. shit, mate. I was just like, there's your fucking heal, mate. Do you want fucking heal? He gets one first, and you get one now. You were very, very good at spinning plates. Very good at spinning plates. I do remember on um, a moment you shined for me, really, um, because I'd never raided with you, which was always, you know, we wanted you there, obviously, because you're you. But I'd never raided with you, so I didn't know where you were in terms of playing. And then I think it was, what's that boss? that uh, Hiking Mogul. Yeah, yeah. And you were the only guy in that raid who could keep the mage tank alive completely on your own with no help whatsoever. Everybody else tried it because we wanted two paladins healing everybody. Because we had, if I gave me and you a shadow priest, we would heal everybody, no fucking problem. But when um, on hiking Morgo, nobody could keep Nups was the mage. No, yeah. even in his full stand gear, nobody could cope with that double fireball barrage when his shield fell. But you did. You had a whole system worked That's what out. I fucking do. All fucking fight. No danger of him dying whatsoever when you were in that position. That was awesome. That was really cool. Say more good things about me. Uh, you were really good at tanking the uh, things at Moragrim when we went prot. Yeah, the, the fucking Murlocs, mate. Carry we on. had to go like prot, this. didn't we? Say we another thing. Well, that was it. I've run out of things. Tell me I'm a snappy dresser. A snappy dresser. You're a very snappy dresser. A little bit of class. Nice. Nice, mate. Yeah. So a little bit of class. So hopefully in the next web show, maybe we'll hear something about Heart of Fear. We've also got something planned for Christmas. Do we? Yeah, we talked about it last week. Uh, some Christmas-themed stuff going on. Oh, yeah, we did. We do. And, of course, I now have less than four weeks to film The Way of the Warrior 2. You need to get PvP. I do need to PvP. So, on Sunday, I'm not going to promise anything, but on Sunday, I'm likely to be streaming essentially all day PvPing, uh, which should be good, uh, hopefully. I haven't done it for a while. but I've I not PvP'd I... in Moth either, but I'll fucking am there. Well, on Sunday. Oh, you're looking after Ava, so maybe you can come. Well, there you go. Ava's got to sleep, mate. So we Ball should be uh, play. We should be PvPing a little bit there. I think that's. I'll give it a go. Cool. So I'm yeah. going to try and time that for Sunday, about mid-afternoon. The fucking star guys, like Rasty and that, they're all fucking got PvP gear as it is, so we'll get them in. And like Rasty just can't be killed, prig. Yeah, if any fans are on, we'll fucking do it. We'll absolutely do it. You've unmodded Genji again. That always makes me sad. I haven't. How have I done it? Because you keep banning him, I think. No, I don't. <laughs> Let me just re. Uh, let me do. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I think you are trolling him a little bit. Getting on to some films then. So, Skyfall, opinions. Awesome as fuck. I got told awesome as fuck, except a twist that I don't know what it is, but he's, uh, the person who told me about it said he really disliked it. A twist? Mm. No. Disagree? No. I can't say anything bad about Skyfall. I thought it was unbelievable. You can't obviously go into what Skyfall means because it'll spoil the film. Yeah. But the film was fucking awesome. Basically, it's not as cheesy as a fire sale, I hope, from Die Hard 4. <laughs> What's it, Justin Long? It's a fire sale. And everyone's like, what the fuck's a fire sale? And then we proceed to have 20 minutes of explaining a fire sale. Well, what a fire sale is. Everything must go. <laughs> Dicks. But no, it's unbelievable. Basically, they've. They've made Bond, because Daniel Craig's uh, getting older, but they're not trying to uh, present him in youth anymore. They've oh, basically said, wisdom. They're basically saying, Bond, you're getting old. And that's the gimmick of the film. Okay. But they do it really fucking well. And there is one little thing in that film. It's so insignificant until the very end of the film that basically sums up James Bond in that film. I, it's... I, I, don't, I, can't, I can't go into it because it'll spoil the fucking film. But it's good. But it's I'd good. I mean, recommend like, it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, like the when I went watching it with 
uh, my mum and dad. Fuck me, I took my mum and dad to see it in Suzanne. Uh, there's a part in it, like, at the end of it, let's, let's be honest, at the end of it, like, everything's done and done and done. And uh, James Bond stood there in London, like, with his head, like, to the side. It's basically the British version of the American thing, where basically he's got his head to the side, there's a big fucking flagpole with the Union Jack. Oh, does he really do it's that? He's like, yeah! Did he take it there? For the fucking Brits, mate. <laughs> For the Brits. For the fucking Brits. It's about Brits. time the Brits had a flag yeah. in a movie. We all fucking stood up like that, mate. <laughs> there is absolutely no patriotism in this country whatsoever, but you it felt it. Min. Did you feel a twinge? I felt it. I felt it. I was fully erect, which was embarrassing because I was sat next to my mum and dad. Oh, I think they were proud. They are, mate. Like, look at that guy. <laughs> That's our little guy. That's our little patriot. <laughs> look at him now. He's so brave. Yeah. Well, oh, awesome. Oh, dude, it's such a fucking good film. And I can't remember the name. He's, he's called, is it fucking Javier or something like that? Who plays the bad guy. I can't remember his actor's name. I, I've never seen him in a film, which is stupid because he's been in a lot of good films like uh, No Country for Old Men and stuff like that. But he's not scary, but he's very fucking strange and he's so good at being like the villain in that film. He's is he really a creepy good. dude? Yes. Is he John Malkovich creepy? Wait, Javier Bardem. Bardem. See, I was right with Javier, mate. Is he John Malkovich creepy? In what film? Uh, I want to say Clear and Present Danger, but I don't know if you've seen it. Because I've seen clear You know, there's some yeah. films that I, I don't think you've seen and you should do, like A Beautiful Mind with Russell Crowe. Have you ever seen Dead Poets Society? Makes me sad. There's though. no fucking robot superheroes or cheesy gunfights, and no. Right, then what about Star Wars then? Star Purchased Wars. by Disney. But you've got a downer on this. I don't. It can't be any worse than what Lucas did. It can't be. It just cannot be. No. Do you know what the bad thing is? Six films now. Three films which are the trilogy, fucked up by another three films which I detested, apart from a bit of the last one, episode three. The first thing they do is, okay, we've just bought Lucasfilm, okay, we're going to film another couple of Star These Wars films. These three already exist, you know that, right? They've been, they were written in the 70s. Yeah. So they're Regardless, not... Regardless, don't make any more Star Wars films. Why? Let's just put but this what way. if they're fucking brilliant? Would you have said Good that about point. Batman films after Batman and Robin? I would have. Mate, you can't compare that. Batman and Robin is the fucking asshole of anything Batman Robin. Well, related. that's what I'm saying. After that, I'm like, please, after watching that, I was like, please do not make any more of these. Really do not. Yeah, but then what happens if for another three films you're stuck with another fucking Jar Jar Binks? It could happen, but we could get The Dark Knight. Or we could get Batman Begins. Or Star Wars Begins. No. We're not going to get Mickey Skywalker. That's not going to happen. It can only be a good thing. No. It could only be a good thing. No. I always wanted to know what the final three were. I really did. <laughs> Got it wrong as well. <laughs> Rookie. <laughs> Just one sec. What a loser. It's pretty far away. Okay. As you were. <laughs> pretty far away. Uh, but, um... Yeah, fucking, I'm really looking forward to it. I I'm think it's going to be ace. What do you guys think? Do you think it's going to be fucking good? Jar Jar Binks is the shit. <laughs> Don't What's wrong me. with Jar Jar? Everything's wrong with fucking Jar Jar Binks. Where do you think the story takes us? Hey? In the, path, in the, the pathology of Star Wars. Because the rebels win by Return of the Jedi. Am I right in thinking? Return, the end of, Return of, the of the Jedi. Jedi the rebels Empire win. Empire Strike Back, Return of the Jedi, yes. They win. So it can only go badly. And well, all, actually, I, I every don't know film is that. better when the bad guys get further ahead. Well, what, I don't know how. It's got to be. It's got to be set after the time of this now. So it's going to be set a couple of years on. By then, there could have been multiple factions that have refaced this. I mean, people might know what the films are going to be, but I don't know that deep into Star Wars. I don't. But what do you predict? Is what I'm saying. I don't know. Because they can't have the good guys just getting better for three films. That can't happen. It's got to be. The bad guys getting the upper hand again over the, the rebels. Yeah, but how? How? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but it's got to be like that. I mean, Yoda's toast. Tea cakes. Samuel L. God knows God. where he is. Is he dead? Is Windu toast? Of course he is. He gets fucking thrown out of the window after he's had his arm cut off. What a bitch. What a Loser, fucking mate. rookie bitch Samuel L. is. But it's going to be good. I mean, it's, everyone says it's Disney, but... Disney made the Avengers. 
Well, they, they produced it. They didn't have much say in it, I don't think. Well, let's just hope that they have that amount of say in the Star Wars films. I don't know. But did you see Sony might be offloading Spider-Man? Sony's selling most of its entertainment division. The fucking, they're doing it with all the fucking pre, uh, superhero films. I mean, I hate that. I mean, it's such a childish thought that I've got. But basically, I think our company should own the rights to a franchise. Well, that's just not the way the world works. Well, I know it's not. I know it's not. But, but if, if Marvel gets Spider-Man back, you're not happy about that? Of course I'm fucking happy about it. Well, that's that. what I mean. They're selling it off. And I think Marvel has the first option in the contract, is what uh, people are saying. Is that Marvel has first choice refusal on it's, buying it back. It wouldn't... Yeah, but surely that's not the case marvel do own spider-man it's just they don't own the rights to make the films yeah they're selling Mar- that yeah, sony marvel would have to give it to a company to make that film though wouldn't they no no it's entirely sony's discretion who they sell it to because they own it it's theirs yeah, nothing well, to do with marvel but they yeah, have first refusal what i'm like. saying is marvel wouldn't marvel wouldn't make the film though would they if they had the rights i'm, sure, I'm pretty sure they wanted spider-man in the avengers yeah they should have had wolverine in the avengers Wolverine was never an Avenger. I don't care, he's fucking... I don't care, I want to see it. I'm really not looking forward to a new Wolverine film, I don't know why. Why? I just... I don't know, I think it's going to be a little bit Pandaria. Iron Man 3 trailer. Okay, okay. Let's talk about the Iron Man 3 trailer. (laughs) Awesome! 2013, woo! Is it 2013? Yes, it is. April 28th. 23.13. 23.13, 23.13. 23.13, mate. 23.13. It's a long wait. It is a good trailer. Iron Man fucking 3. What is in Extremis? The Extremis, mate! Because that's what it's about, right? Well, I, I get it, the idea that the suit's alive because the suit tries to hunt Pepper. Well, there's basically, there's a lot of fucking story arcs that they've well, included the in the trailer. the chat is being spammed. <laughs> exactly. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of story arcs that they've put in the trailer. Like, you see the Iron Patriot, which basically, the Iron Patriot was built a, when Captain America was dead, and B, was built by Norman Osborn. What is it, the Iron Patriot? Basically, Norman Osborn. I don't fucking know how he gets hold of it, but basically, all I know is, it's when Captain America's dead, Norman Osborn basically gets the, an Iron Man armor and turns it into the Iron Patriot. Oh, so it's tribute an to, yeah. It basically, it's basically a war machine recolored by Captain America. Is it a suit that's worn, or a suit that functions on its own? It's a suit that's worn. Okay. Uh, the Extremis is where I am there's basically this fucking nano uh, technology okay and the story is in the extremist Iron Man fights this guy who's got the extremist in him and he's fucking invincible he fucks up Iron Man beyond all recognition is it a virus it's, it's like a it's a it's, a, it's nano cells oh right so he's got nanotechnology inside yes. and it's called the extremist it's called the extremist uh, and then he fucks up Tony Stark beyond all recognition and then basically the only thing that's going to keep him alive is if they give him the extremis which basically has the side effects where he is directly integrated into the Iron Man armor that's why oh, you so see he communicates him. it on exactly. a neural level so okay. he basically controls it when it's even not on his body and stuff like that now in the film where it shows the Iron Man armor roll over Pepper Potts that could be remote control because I think the Mandarin takes control well, could that not be armors. Tony dreaming about fucking Pepper it could be that's what I mean because I know. would be dreaming about fucking Pepper because it's Paltrow would get it yeah they're putting in all this stuff I'll tell you what else annoys me is it's like the first time someone's seen someone not of the same race playing a character is he called Ben Kingsley who yep. plays the Mandarin yeah oh he's not Asian fuck him off that's wrong okay Nick Fury there's one the Kingpin there's another yeah, one. Yeah, he was uh, Clark, Michael Clark Duncan. Michael Clark Duncan, yeah. He's like, get over it. Just because someone's a different race doesn't mean that they can't play that character. I would fucking love to see the Kingpin done properly. Oh, I, I thought he was done good. Clark Duncan did it okay, but I still want to see... Uh, it, it'd have to be done on More CG. of a backstory, do you think? Oh, you mean that actually fucking Just, huge? Yeah, I mean, Michael Clark Duncan is a big fella. Let's, I mean, he's dead now, isn't he? Clark Duncan, didn't he Yeah, die? he did. Yeah, yeah. he died. Uh, but he's a big fucking fella, Clark Duncan. He's a big badass. But I still want. I think it needs to go to CG to really get exactly how big and badass this guy's supposed to be. Fucking cool. Yeah. So why, fucking miles away? <laughs> Tryhards, man. Tryhards. You've got Manchester right. Gold stars. <laughs> um. So, I would really love to see probably up to a CG level. I mean, especially after they did with the Hulk. I mean, you can obviously tell it's CG, but it's nowhere near as bad as the Matrix Two. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that is Matrix. The Matrix CG is the worst fucking CG in the history of time. Do you know what's better CG than Matrix Two? Fucking Jurassic Park. Red Dwarf. Red Dwarf has better CG than fucking Matrix Two. It's terrible. It's the worst thing ever. Yeah. Um, but a really solid kingpin. But again, that, they need Spider-Man back. Really. I mean, Daredevil. Let's not talk about fucking 
Has Ben Affleck ever been in a good film besides Good Will Hunting, where he played a retard? Armageddon. He was a retard in that film as well. That film was carried by Bruce Willis, Clark Duncan, Buscemi. Liv Tyler, Ben Affleck could have been shot right at the beginning of the film. I wouldn't have fucking cared. Jane Silent Bob. He plays himself. Yeah. And he's a dick. Yeah, he was the fucking bomb in Phantom Show. The town? Isn't that the one where it's actually uh, That's Casey Affleck? Really good. Plays, but is it not Casey Affleck? No, 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 no. It's fu- the town is awesome. I think Jeremy Rain is in the town as well. It's a Jeremy fucking Rain. really good film, yeah. I watched SWAT again the other day. SWAT. <laughs> it is a good fucking film. Love SWAT. SWAT is on my. I mean, one of the other PVG videos I want to do uh, when we get time is top five films to watch while you're leveling. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Because SWAT would be on my fucking list, man, because that film is so funny all the way Demolition through. Demolition, man. Yeah, we can't have the same list. You put Demolition Man on. I would have Demolition Man on my list all fucking You day. can have that though, but you can't have fucking swap. Affleck was the bomb in the Phantom. That's <laughs> what I said. It's the line from the film, mate. It's terrible. <laughs> what does he call him? Uh, what do they call him in role models? You white you Ben Affleck. Reindeer <laughs> Games. <Yeah. laughs> fucking Reindeer Games. Fuck you, Daredevil. Oh, terrible. I hate Ben Affleck. He's such a fucking cunt. It's like Hugh Grant. What a cunt. Yeah, but he's banged some fucking hot birds. And some hookers. So? Who are, who divine, asked divine, them? Divine, well, me. <laughs> <laughs> divine, whatever. Uh, yeah, nah. but uh, getting into the Matrix as well. I think I told I told you a couple of times now that I almost cried at a trailer the other day, which oh, yeah, really yeah, yeah. was a weird experience because sometimes I cry at stuff if I'm really into a story. I, mean, I love my stories. Like a good story really gets me. That's why I love films so much. I really like to take into the story, and if I find it believable, I really get into it. And I don't know what the story is this film, but it's Cloud Atlas. I have never read the novel, so I have no idea what this film's about. I don't know whether it was just the music, which is really, really good. The music is quality for the trailer, or it was just Tom Hanks' voiceover. But by the end of that, I was almost in fucking tears. Did Tom Hanks do a Morgan Freeman? He's not quite Freeman. He's not quite a Morgan, but he's uh, he's fucking... He's almost there, that's the thing. He's almost there. He's, He's so... I don't know. I don't even know what this film's about, but the music combined with that voiceover, I was like... I couldn't tell you what the fuck the world was about at all. I couldn't tell you what anything goes on in that film at all. All I know is it takes place in different timelines with different people who are the same person, uh, like Tom Hanks in different lifetimes. So it's like what Tom Hanks was in the Victorian age, and then his life, his life force, like is in the, the modern era as well and in the future. And he keeps bumping into the same people who are doing the same thing. It looks weird. It looks fucking weird. It looks weird. So I just brought something up there that I'm sure the non-UK uh, guys will know. But have you been watching this Apocalypse thing, Darren Brown? Uh, I've heard nothing but Apocalypse by Darren Brown in work, but I didn't watch it. I Darren know what Brown, it's about. Yeah, an interesting concept that um, is a little bit dangerous, I think. I mean, what they've done to that guy is kind of one of the things torture. that might... Torture. It's torture, and it kind of makes him question the rest of his life if everything is going on that is correct for the sake of a TV show and our entertainment. And that's the thing that's bothering me, is that poor guy. I mean, he, uh, Booster was explaining to me that they set him up over nine weeks, like they channeled news feeds into yeah. his house and phone calls and news saying that this meteor was around. Uh, just to explain it, if you guys don't know what this thing is, if you're not in the UK, cause it's a UK-based show, uh, but essentially, they've got this guy who they selected from hundreds of people. He had to meet very specific criteria. He was into NASA. He was a single guy. He had no family. He was somebody... It's a little bit like Saw in one respect. Is that they? It, it was somebody who his family felt was wasting his life. Okay. And didn't value his existence. So it's, he, meet, he met very specific criteria. So what they did is they started channeling information to him uh, through newspapers that he would read, news reports on his TV... Um, mobile phone updates and stuff like that saying there was a meteor and it was a risk of hitting the earth and then they said here's tickets to a concert and it's one of these private concerts and it's out in a rural area so it's only 200 strong for a very popular band and he got tickets so his family were like we'll take you to the concert uh, and he gets on a bus and they drive him out there and Darren Brown is on the bus Darren Brown's like a magician think David Blaine he's kind of similar to that and halfway along they set up pyrotechnics fire away from the bus that looks like a meteor falling and a meteor storm so they sets this thing off and then Darren Brown has hypnotised him at some point in the past and sleeps him while he's going this all this is going on so it's like he's blacked out and then they move him to the zone where he wakes up in oh uh, so like the meteors hit the fucking like the bus. meteors hit the earth uh, hit the earth and everything's gone pear shaped and then he wakes up and he's all alone in the world 
Everybody else has been zombified, killed, whatever, fucking diseased, everything like that. Uh, and then they set up events to make it real. So he meet, and then they test whether they test him out. They like a little girl approaches him, who's a survivor, uh, and he's like, "Will you help me?" And just to see if he will help this little girl. Uh, and yeah, and then zombies attack him, and make him run away from these zombies. Like, and he genuinely starts to believe it. And then an ambulance guy, uh, survivor drives past, is screaming at me that he's survivor, survivor. So he gets in the thing, uh, and then <laughs> it's quite funny on film. Is they make it out like the ambulance guy is legging it away from the zombies, but he actually he's doing donuts. And there's people pushing the side of the van, so it's like the zombies are trying to get into it. And he's crapping his pants and shit in the fucking vehicle. I don't fucking blame him. Yeah, I don't him. blame him whatsoever. And um, they take him to like a, a secure camp where there's notice boards about missing people. And for the sake of it, just so he doesn't fucking have a mental breakdown, is the other thing saying uh, a poster saying he's missing and his family is in uh, Ireland or something like that or Wales, uh, somewhere safe. His family's safe and they're looking for him. So he right. has that in his life. So he's not. And they only do it over two days. It's only a weekend. But they genuinely make him believe that the world has ended, the country has completely turned to zombies, there is no survivors besides a few odd pockets of people, and how does he cope actually in an apocalypse? And then you can hear him over the mouthpiece the saying, right, like when he's with the ambulance guy and the little girl, they say, ambulance guy, take the little girl out so he can have a think about what's going on. And we leave him on his own, he fucking breaks down in tears. Like, he's totally fucking spanned. Uh, and then eventually they're going to come out and say, it's only a joke. <laughs> it's joking, mate. World's fine and all that kind of shit. That guy's gonna be screwed up for a fucking long of time. After that. A really long time. That is dangerous shit to be Man, playing with. That is such a fucking awful concept. Fuck me, man. That is almost so. If you can make that, uh, if you can make that sort of like fantasy into a fucking, if you had the funding to do that to actually make it a believable Armageddon, you that guy would not fucking recover. He would never recover. I can't see how he would possibly fucking recover because he essentially will question every part of his reality for the future periods coming. How could he not? What if this actually happens at some point? And this guy mindlessly walks into zombies. But as Booster pointed out, you can tell how specific the criteria is because he was of the opinion, being Booster, that as soon uh, they did the whole thing with Resident Evil as well. He wakes up in a hospital and it's completely empty and he walks through the hospital and shit. They did the whole thing, the whole bit from Resident Evil. It's the first thing Booster would be doing, be looking for a fucking weapon. Yeah. And when he sees a zombie, he would be going for that fucking zombie. And he said, what would happen in the series if the guy was like, fuck this, and goes for a zombie, and the zombie goes, ah, crazy bastard's chasing me, you know what I mean? Runs to the production crew, exactly. whatever. But he's been picked because obviously he's very passive, uh, very sort of uh, pussy kind of guy. I mean, not a pussy, I mean, zombies are coming at you. Pussy's the wrong word, but a very passive, non-violent kind of guy. Yeah. Um, pacifist, mate. A pacifist. Or somebody who just wouldn't engage <clears throat> with zombies and stuff. I mean, everybody likes to say that um, they would fight zombies, but would you? Fuck that, mate. No. <laughs> that's, that's, my, that's my fucking thing. And I, I, like, I've mentioned it a few times on these like web shows. Even when I stream and it comes up in conversation, the whole concept of zombies, just zombies, freaks the fuck out of me. So I'm not coming to yours then? We're not, no. We're not farming my life. You wouldn't get into my house. <laughs> fuck that. I would certainly try and pack some heat, though. Uh, yeah, well, as someone it. said, it's very morally wrong. This show, it's I mean, yeah. I mean, this is really pushing things to the that's limit. That's the best way okay. to describe it. It's basically they're trying to reach new highs with reality TV. I just Shock think value. it's. I don't think it's anybody's place to tell somebody what they're doing with their life is wrong. I mean, one of the reasons they pit this guy is that his family felt he was wasting his life. Uh, well, that's his life. That? It's not yeah, his family's it's his life. life to waste. You know what I mean? It's just I don't know. The whole thing is, and I just cannot see how anybody can come out of that and be okay with everything that's around them. Is this still part of the show? What if I haven't actually been woken up? You start asking all these kinds of questions. Can you imagine Am I still that? in the Matrix? I but don't like, know. All right, then look at it from like this. I mean, it's obviously controlled, but what if like they said like, right, okay, zombie one, you're going to go on fucking set and this guy's going to absolutely leg it for you. What if he didn't? What if he actually took a fucking pipe off a wall, bludgeoned it to fucking well, death? He wouldn't be in the fault. He absolutely wouldn't be in the not. fault, but he'd go down yeah. for manslaughter. No, he wouldn't. He oh, would absolutely, no way. Absolutely no way. No way whatsoever. If they put that guy in that situation, he wouldn't. But he would live with the consequences of having killed having somebody. Having killed someone, yeah. Now, that's so much worse. Because he killed an innocent person out of his control. Absolutely out of his control. He's not, he would never be crash charged. He'd have everything on camera. He was attacked, essentially, by, yeah. by somebody. And he thought it was a zombie. I mean, imagine that being in court. So, and he's like, I literally believed I was being fucking attacked by a zombie. 
How can you possibly question what I did that that situation? One sec, Polly's put. Oh, Polly, what's up, Polly? It's not that kind of thing. Darren is not that kind of person to do something to mess with someone long term. He's just an entertainer. I seriously recommend you go and see him live. Yeah, I agree that he's tr it's an entertainment show, but I really question this particular aspect. I haven't minded anything else he's done. I especially liked, um, I like the way he explains stuff at the end. Just to give an example of what Darren Brown has done here, just to reaffirm what Polly said. I really still disagree completely with the apocalypse thing. I think that's really terrible to do that to somebody for any entertainment purpose whatsoever. Um, but the other one that I thought was really interesting is he convinced people they could win the lottery. I saw that. And did you see the horse one? No. Okay, so you know gambling on the horses? He convinced a woman that she could not lose on a horse and he got her to spend of every penny she had and borrowed money off her parents and everything. I think she got about £11,000 or something, which is a lot for the average person. And she bet it on a horse and she won. And then they revealed at the end that essentially they'd started, uh, they'd worked out the odds that if you bet on every single horse, a certain percentage of people will win. So they started, they worked it back up to about six races and started actually with about 800 people. And the people who didn't win, they just went, oh, sorry. That's it. But after that was 800, a percentage would guaranteed win. Of the next bet, somebody would guaranteed win. And they worked it all the way down. So it was a mathematical probability. And then they, uh, so for this woman, genuinely, she won every single race just off these recommendations. Little did she know she was actually part of a game. It was, it was interesting stuff. I mean, well, that's not harmful to anybody, especially when you explain it to the end. But how do you explain to a guy that his whole perception of reality has been twisted by TV in that respect. Just one sec. Uh, there was two things. One of them I wanted to bring up. One sec, one sec, one sec. Mm. The guy was hypnotised at the end and made it out to be a dream and then Darren explains it all. So if he's hypnotised into thinking it was a dream, what when people come up to him in the streets? Uh, either way, whatever justification it comes with, there's that's something that guy's going to live with because that is possibly the most lucid dream you will ever have. And a guy, the the guy signed up for it himself. He signed up for a Darren Brown experiment. That's true because, uh, but so did lots and lots. But this is what I say: he was picked because he had specific criteria. He signed up for a Darren Brown experiment, and he was the one who was chosen to take part out of hundreds of people who signed up because everyone else failed the criteria essentially. You know, to be able to be convinced of this and be hypnotized and be of certain passive ways and that kind of thing. Do you get me? Oh, yeah, I get you. I, I still think it's fucked on that, man. I mean, like, you can do all the psychology tests in the fucking world, but there's a certain percentage of anomalies where what if that did happen? What if he went on a fucking rampage? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he went Carmageddon. Exactly. Oh God, they thought, well, that didn't happen, which is cool. I mean, that's not the stuff I was expecting. I mean, they picked that guy specifically because that was very unlikely to happen. And of course, the people who go in dressed as zombies I have to expect that that could happen. They will be prepared for that, though. Is that in case this guy does attack them, they've probably got some training or whatever. You don't know who they sent in. They could have sent in military trained personnel, for all we know. But still, it was interesting. I do. I feel very bad for the guy. <laughs> I feel very bad for the guy. That sounds fucked up, man. Uh, I can't imagine you taking part. I don't think you'd meet the criteria. I wouldn't meet the criteria. Not with your rage problems. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. I mean, after the show, have you seen that video? Did I ever show you called Nicholas Cage loses yes, his shit? It's rubbish. Go and watch Nicholas Cage loses his shit and tell me rubbish. that's rubbish. It's, it's absolutely fucking, rubbish. That guy's my rage idol. I thought that was shit. I really did. You're watching a different shit. video, mate. I'm not watching a different video. I'm sorry. I thought that was fucking garbage. Absolute fucking garbage. You're a dick. Really, as bad as your 90s collection that you're playing over the stream. How dare you? <laughs> I, when I fucking stream and there's a guy, uh, I can't remember, pronounce his fucking name again, but he sends me links to it, like hour-long 90s dance music. But it's just a, it's an hour-long playlist of when you're playing away and a song comes on that you haven't heard for like, and you don't even think about it. It's like, I fucking love this song. <laughs> Child you're of the playing away. It's so good. Right, I think we'll take our final break and then we've got the transmogs coming up in part three, my friends. Yes. And then we'll finish off with some QA and all that kind of stuff. So your transmog competition is coming up very shortly. Nineties on the stream is fucking mint, nineties on the stream is fucking cool. We're Not so fair. blue, I don't like sitting here. We're far too blue. We'll be back. <laughs> 